Hi there, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthair Cats in Perth, Western Australia. I've been breeding and exhibiting my cats since 2004 and I'm even a cat show judge. I'm passionate about the cat fancy and I want to share my knowledge and experiences with you so that you can enjoy your hobby as much as I do. That's what the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast is all about. In this series, I'm taking a moment to answer some of the most regular cat breeding questions I get asked every day. Hopefully the answers will help you too. I'm also covering some topics that are important to new cat breeders so that you can start out on the right foot. Some of the episodes are scripted and some of them are off the cuff. The audio is both good and bad. But the main thing is the information and I'm sharing it in whatever way I can with you in mind. There's two words that you might hear when you go to a cat show. Maybe you've heard them in a webinar. Maybe you've read about them online. Maybe you've read about them in a book. There's two words that uh, breeders should know about, and they are genotype and phenotype. So we're back looking at something to do with um, cats' um, genetics and basic genetics again. And these are terms that are quite basic genetic terms. But you'll hear them a bit and it's good to have an idea of what they actually mean. And once they start to make sense to you, it makes things a little bit easier. You might hear judges say it when you're at a show. They might say, we judge by, genoty- we judge by phenotype, not by genotype. And you'll think, well, okay, that's great, but I don't know what either of those things mean. <laughs> so let's explain it for you. Now, cats are made up of their DNA, they're made up of their genetics, they're made up of chromosomes, they're made up of genes, they're made up of all of those things. And all of those things are kind of like, I like to think of it as like the recipe for the cat, the instruction book for the cat. And those things are in the cat and they make it look a certain way. And what happens is that um, those things all all come out and, and are the cat. But what we see is not always everything. There are also things there that we don't see. So for example, when you think about any particular cat, they've all got a different blood type. They've all got one of the different blood types that they can have. And that's part of their genetics and that's part of their makeup and that's part of who they are and part of their recipe. But we can't see it. It's not there for us to see. We can't look at a cat and go, oh, you're an A, you're an AB, you're a BB. We can't see any of that information. And it's the same for other things that cats are. We can see a cat that is a colour point, but we can't see a cat that carries colour point. So this is basically what it all boils down to. Genotype is what the cat's made up of. It's the cat's recipe, it's the cat's DNA. It's all of those different things, all of those different genes that the cat has. That's its genotype. If you do a DNA test for your cat, that's showing you part of its genotype. What we see when a cat walks around, what we can actually tell by looking, that's phenotype. So what it is is what those genes, that recipe, what they've actually expressed and what we can see, that's the cat's phenotype. So I'm going to give you an example. And I had some friends here on the weekend and we were talking about cats and gene. Um, genetics and basic stuff and we were talking about um, bicolors and we were talking about the fact that you know if you you have a bicolor it is a bicolor. A bicolor is a really good example of where the cat has something in its DNA. It has a copy of the bicolor gene in one of its DNA placeholders. In its recipe it, ha- it has bicolor and that bicolor you can see that bicolor is the same genetically as it is phonetically. If it has it, you can see it. And one of my friends said to me, oh yeah, my cat um, has bicolor in her pedigree, so I guess I'll have to DNA test her for that because her cat's a solid blue. And I said, no, no, bicolor, you can see it. If it has it, you can see it. Bicolor is um, ge- bicolor is genetic. It's genetic. They have it, but it's, it's um, phonetically expressed. So another example of when it's not like that is colour point, which I mentioned before. So colour point, a cat can have colour point if it has two um, colour point genes in its colour point placeholder, then it is a colour point, but a cat can also be carrying colour point. So genetically, it can be a cat that is or isn't a colour point, and it can be a cat that 
does or doesn't have a color point gene. And we can only see the version of it where it has two color point genes. We can't see the version of it where it has one compared to where it has none. That's not being expressed phonet phonetically. That's just being expressed genetically. So I'm not sure if I've made that easier to understand or harder. But basically what it boils down to is that when you have a cat, it's made up of stuff that's it's genes, it's genetic in that way, and then what we can see is the phonetic part of it. Um, the example I said before about what when judges say it at a show, and what that often boils down to is this. Um, a cat is, when you're judging cats, you judge what you see in front of you on the bench. You can, depending on the standard, there might be things in there, make allowance for this, you're allowed to make allowance for that. But the thing you're not allowed to make allowance for is what you can't see. So if you have a cat that's in front of you and it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like based on what it's registered as, and it gets registered based on its parents and based on its genetics, if you've done DNA testing, if it doesn't look like that, then it'll get outclassed because we judged we judge we don't judge on genotype we judged on we judge on phenotype we judge on what we can see not what the cat's made up of and the example of this a really good example of this is with a red cat now if you have a red cat and you haven't been working on red cats and you haven't got a red cat program and a red cat pops out chances are it's going to be stripey 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 up the wazoo really stripy and last season i bred by uh, two red bicolors, colors and they are stripy as but they are genetically red cats they are not red tabbies there is no tabbies in any of my cats i don't have it in my recipe it, they don't have the genes in them to give to their kittens so there is no way the kittens could be red they um sorry red tabby they are 100% just red cats. No tabby, just red. But if I put them on the show bench and showed those little bicolors, showed them as adults, every judge would say, this is a red tabby. Genetically, it's not a red tabby. Phonetically, it is. The phenotype of those cats is that they present as a red tabby, but they are not a red tabby. So I can't register them as something they're not. I can only register them as what they are. And they were registered as red bicolors. They will breed as red bicolors. Those cats will not produce tabbies. They might produce more reds that look stripy, but they won't produce tabbies. There's just a quirk to do with red where it shows up as stripes. And I've done a video on this if you want more information about that on my YouTube channel, you can go and see the video about why red cats are so confusing. And I use my tortie, your maker, to describe why they're stripy like that. So red, these little boys were red. If I showed them, a judge would say, no, they're not red, they're a red tabby. I am not allowed to stand up in the show hall and say, no, 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 they're red. We've had them DNA tested. Or no, 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 they're red. Their parents can't produce tabby. The judge has to judge what they see. And when they say this cat's a tabby, and we judge phonetically, not genetically, they're judging the cat as it is, what they're actually saying, and what people don't seem to be able to understand as well as they should, is they're saying that, that sometimes things are not a good version of what they should be. Maybe their genetic makeup says that they should be this, but they're not a good version of this. Maybe that's a tabby cat that has, it's a mackerel tabby, but it's, it's a spotted tabby, sorry, but its spots have joined up on one side and it's half mackerel, half spotted. So genetically, we know what type of tabby it is, but phonetically, it's expressing both types of tabby and that just makes it a bad example of a tabby. And that's okay. Um, you also have cases where maybe you have a cat that is, say, a color point and you go to a show and it's um, a, a lilac color point but it doesn't look like a lilac color point. It looks like a blue color point or the other way around. Um, it, maybe it's got tabby in there too. And it doesn't look like what it is. You can't register it as what it looks like. You have to register it as what it is. And once you register it as what it is, it gets shown as what it's registered as. And that means that when you go to a show, if it doesn't look like a good version of that, 
if it doesn't, if its phenotype doesn't match its genotype, then the judge may outclass it. So it all boils down to genotype is what the cat's made up of, the recipe, the genes it has, its DNA. Phenotype is what it looks like, what it expresses, what that recipe then produces in the cat to look at. And um, the phenotype and genotype, you want them to match, but sometimes they don't. And when they don't, it creates problems when you're going to shows. It also can create problems for you when you're registering the kittens because you can miss, um, you can choose the wrong thing when you're registering them. It's super, super important that they get registered as what they actually are, especially if they're breeding cats, because going forward, it means that stuff that you don't expect can pop up. And then you've got something weird on your pedigree. You're trying to register a cat that doesn't actually make sense. Um, and it's a whole can of worms and you'll have to have a big discussion with your registrar and, and that kind of thing. And in some associations, they can refuse to accept them or they can register them as AOC or they can say that they're just, they have to be a pet cat, they can't be a breeding cat. So there's different things about that. But really what it boils down to is genotype is what it's made up of, phenotype is what it looks like. That's what it is in a nutshell. Um, and you'd hope they'd be the same, but in a lot of cases, they're not. So hopefully that explained those without getting a little bit too complicated and making it a little bit harder for you. But there's um, a lot to do with cat genetics and they can be very confusing. Now, if you want to find out more information about cat breeding, please visit my website at www.catbreedingforbeginners.com and I'd really love for you to sign up for my email list. That's what I'm going to use to send people information as I'm adding new things that might be exciting for you, including, hopefully, at some point, a membership group for new breeders. So sign up to my um, email list on my website and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Thanks for listening to the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast. Make sure you visit my website at catbreedingforbeginners.com for lots more information. You can sign up to my email list and stay tuned as my Cat Breeding 101 online course is coming soon.